Hey guys, it's Doc, and today we're going to talk about scalp wheels. Scalp wheels, which are one of my dreaded issues. <laughs> we're going to talk about scalp wheels. We're going to talk about what scalp wheels do, how to adjust them, and I'm going to show you me adding an additional scalp wheel onto my deck. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, if I could, I'd patch, pass legislation that required 20 scalp wheels on every lawnmower deck in the United States. I'd sign that bill. <laughs> I just, I don't know why manufacturers just don't put more scalp wheels on a deck. It's just, it's just a no-brainer to me. Anyways, today what I'm going to do is I've got a little French well over here next to my pool that they put in years ago. I'm going to ride the lawnmower over that to help explain what a scalp wheel does and how it protects. The next thing I'm going to do is I'll go, yesterday um, I was doing some stuff in the garage and I'll explain how to adjust your scalp wheels properly and then I'll show you a custom solution I had made up to add an additional scalp wheel on my deck. Now, normally, I don't like to create a video unless I can point you guys in a direction. So if your lawn needs fertilizer, this is the fertilizer I recommend. It's over here on Amazon. Go ahead and buy it. Boom, that's what I do. I, I find solutions for you guys. I personally buy stuff, I test it, and I make recommendations. Unfortunately, I can't do that for you today because there just isn't a lot of good solutions out there. You can go on Amazon and you can search, you can go on uh, eBay, you can go everywhere you want. There just really isn't a good. I even had my shop consider at one time actually making some of, of multi-purpose scalp wheel brackets because they, they, they'd sell like crazy, I know, adding scalp wheels to a deck. So I had to come up with a custom solution from my shop and I'm gonna show you that here today. Just remember, when we talk about scalp wheels, this video I'm gonna show you here, your, your mower is here and your deck hangs below it. Now, if your mower wheel hits a hole, it's gonna go into the hole and the deck is gonna follow. Well, what the scalp wheel does is the scalp wheel does this basically. As that mower starts to fall into that hole, that scalp wheel is gonna keep that deck up and level, supposedly. It's gonna keep it with the other terrain around it. That's true. And that's why when I made my purchase, and you should consider this too, look for a riding lawnmower if you're going to get a riding lawnmower that has four scalp wheels. That was the number one priority. I would not buy any mower, riding mower, if it didn't have four scalp wheels on it. But the other thing that you run into, and I run into, now my lawn is crazy. Uh, Ten years of abuse before we bought it, I've got all kinds of ridges all through my lawn. And we're trying to cut Bermuda grass with a rotary, with a rotary riding lawnmower down to an inch. Good luck. So it's really tough to get to ride through here and not get any kind of scalp marks. It's going to happen. But I have, I'll call them knolls, I guess, or ridges. So instead of having a nice flat piece, I have a ridge that looks like this. Well, what ends up happening is, is one scalp wheel is here, one scalp wheel is here, the deck goes across and I scalp that knoll. So I wanted a center deck wheel, a center scalp wheel on the deck. So that's what I'm putting in today. And I'll show you that. Anyways, guys, uh, I'll shut up. Oh, by the way, don't forget, I just put up that fall lawn care schedule video. It's the most important video of the past three months. And in two weeks, we give away a $2,000 reel mower. Watch that video, learn how to win. Let's go over to that other video and we'll get this done. All right, so here's the interesting thing about this video clip. Now I'm gonna run the mower through twice and I'm actually gonna slow it down so you can see this. The hole, I'm gonna show you this hole that I'm going over, this drain, and it's really deep and the hole is big. It's about 18 inches around. When the mower goes over it, the front wheel goes in and the front scalp wheel actually supports the deck. But what happens is, on a little bit on this, is the back wheel and the scalp wheel are so close that they both are able to go into the hole. So it's a, I think it's a great clip to show you what happens when your scalp wheels perform versus when they don't perform just to help you understand i actually when i came back in and watched this clip i was like man that's a great example of when a scalp wheel works and when it doesn't work let me show you this hole so this area is real bumpy it always gets scalp but you can see there's a scalp mark right there and here's why watch this you ready <laughs> disappear in that hole that thing is about six to eight inches deep and it is big. So that's kind of like a French drain head there.
Oh, for the love of God, what am I doing? <laughs> We're going to talk about scalp wheels today. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions about the height of them when you're riding, but uh, I don't know why manufacturers don't put more scalp wheels on decks, so I'm going to add one to my John Deere, so hold on. Uh, one of the reasons why I bought this John Deere, I went to a 48-inch deck, is because it had the four scalp wheels. Scalp wheels are an absolute must <laughs> when you're cutting, trying to cut Bermuda grass, you know, at an inch. So, one, two, three, four on the front and back. But here's the problem. That's great. If this tire dips into a hole, well, that scalp wheel will keep your deck up. That's kind of the whole theory. It's kind of like a four-legged stool. One, your tires are the legs. And if the leg of the stool dips into a hole, well, this deck these wheels will compensate. The problem is not necessarily the holes, but the ridge. So if I go over a ridge of some sort and the scalp wheels are on the outer edge of that ridge and the ridge is up under my deck, the center of my deck is gonna scalp that ridge and that's what I constantly have. That's the problem I have. So I need a middle, I need a scalp wheel on the middle of my deck here. And I really don't know why. There's two two issues I have with John Deere on this. Number one, if you're going to build a 48-inch deck, put a gosh darn scalp wheel in the center of it. I mean, you go up to the next size and they have them. Why not do it on a 48? It's a big deck. Man, my deck's dirty. I need to clean it. Uh, the next thing is I hate the majority. A lot of manufacturers have these this hole system where you can't really fine-tune the scalp wheels. And I wish that they had one of those ratcheting systems. Because let me show you. So here's how you set your scalp wheels. You always put your mower on a hard deck. Then what you do is you set your mower. <clears throat> you set your mower to the cutting height that you're going to go to. And your scalp wheel should be one quarter of an inch off of a hard deck. You got that? So, here's my deck. That's my cutting height. My scalp wheel is one quarter of an inch off a hard deck. What that means is, people always say, well, your scalp wheel shouldn't be turning while you're cutting. No, it, they're going to, because if it's a quarter of an inch off a hard deck, you're gonna have grass rolling along this wheel and your wheel is gonna turn. It's just not necessarily supporting or lifting your deck up. So yes, your wheels will turn and they should be a quarter of an inch off a hard deck, both front and back. Next, so I went online and I'm, I've done this before. I was going to do this last year. Ordered a bunch of um, scalp wheel brackets and wheels and there's just nothing good online. So I went to my shop and I gave it to one of my guys in my shop, one of my metal guys and said, here's what I need, cut this up. <laughs> and this is what he came back with. So he cut that all up and he painted it and that's what he came up with. So I can put it on the front on either side. I can just flip it over. I can just flip it over and now the angle of it is set to fit on my front. So what I've decided to do is, I had him drill two extra holes here. I'm just gonna drill holes in my deck uh, use bolts and lock nush. I'm not going to weld it on there because at some point I might have to take this off I don't know if there's going to be any impact on anything down below. So I'm going to mount that on the front. Let's see how she works So what I plan to do is I'm going to lower I'm going to lower my deck until these wheels just touch the ground so I know how to mount this and my front wheel is in the second hole, so I put this one in the second hole. And then I can just go up here and I can bolt that on there right up at the front. It's not exactly lined up center, it's about a half inch off, but that's close enough. So I'm going to mount that there and we'll see what happens. Alright, so I was able to get three, three of the four bolts on there and it is rock solid. So let me put the wheel on there now. So let me show you how I did this. And I actually got, and a lot of this is guessing. I mean, not guessing, but man, it's hard to get this stuff accurate. And I got kind of lucky. So, 
there's the middle scalp wheel all installed. It doesn't interfere with anything here. It doesn't interfere with anything under the deck. Um, when this wheel is touching, so that wheel has friction, this wheel is about one eighth of an inch above the ground. And that's kind of what I wanted. Um, I didn't necessarily want this interfering with my deck and my deck height. And I wanted this just a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch low, uh, higher than these wheels right here. So my other wheels will be doing their normal job. If a, if a big ridge comes into the middle, this will lift it up a little bit in the middle. So we'll see. We'll give her a test. Again, this is adjustable. I got the four holes here to adjust it. But so far, knock on wood, <laughs> it looks like it'll work. We'll see. So what are the results of my experiment with the extra wheel? I would say they're pretty good. There's some guy cutting the grass over here, by the way. Um, it's really hard to cut Bermuda short with a wide deck rotary mower. I mean, if you want to take it down to one inch and you have a bumpy lawn like I have, I have all kinds of ridges all through here and old rut marks. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible. But my problem, the only problem I've had is just those ridges that sort of get in between the scalp wheels. And let me show you. Okay, right over here I've got one. So I've got this hump right here and my scalp wheels go on either side and that always scalps down brown. Well, guess what? There's a little bit of a scalp, but man, not as near as bad. So I'm happy with that. Um, overall, not too bad for kind of a hard cut. For kind of a hard cut with a rotary. And just so you can get an idea, I'm gonna let you watch my feet for watch a minute. Watch my feet for a minute. Just so you can get an idea of what this grass looks like. It's always hard to get. It's always hard to get a perspective on just how thick this stuff is. Again, I don't real cut back here that often, uh, just because this is so big. There's so many hills, it's so big. It's easier for me just to cut this with the John Deere and concentrate real mower up front. And I've been alternating like every other cut, real mower out front, and then I'll hit it with a John Deere, real mower, John Deere. But the problem has been out front, I have the same thing. I have a couple hump areas, so. girl chasing the little one all right so I promised you guys I'd give you a little update this is five days after my hard cut out front in a PGF complete treatment and that's what the lawn looks like now maybe I'll put up what I should do is I'll put up a picture right now of what it looked like before and then what it looks like now this is Let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five days later. Ugly, ugly. Whew. Short, nasty, yellow, brown, ugly. That's the shortcut, see. Look at it in the shade. That's what she looks like. So don't forget guys make sure you subscribe and uh, sign up for the email alert to the website because the drawing is August 15th for the real mower and plus we're gonna be doing probably three more giveaways over the next couple of weeks or a couple of months talk to you later Doc.